welcome to the first session in Life Transformed. As a reminder, this series of videos are designed to follow the Linton curriculum, Life Transformed, The Way of Love and Lent, which along with the descriptions of each of the seven practices can be found at EpiscopalChurch.org with supplemental and bonus content found at TheHiveApiary.com. In this class, we'll be focusing on the practice called turn. Turn means to pause, listen, and choose to follow Jesus. Like the disciples, we are called by Jesus to follow the way of love. With God's help, we can turn from the powers of sin, hatred, fear, injustice, and oppression towards the way of truth, love, hope, justice, and freedom. In turning, we are reorienting our lives to Jesus Christ, falling in love again and again and again. With that in mind, let's find a comfortable position with your feet on the ground as we begin in prayer. Almighty God, by our baptism into the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you turned us from the old life of sin and grant that we, being reborn to new life in him, may live in righteousness and holiness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This is a reading from Romans 6, verses 3 through 11. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of our Father, so too might we walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. For the ancient church, the Easter vigil was the night when the catechumens, those who had been studying for months in preparation of their baptisms, would enter into the waters of new birth and emerge a member of the body of Christ, the church. Our current baptismal practices rarely do justice to the drama that those nights would contain. We have evidence that catechumens would be asked to stand on a hair shirt, which was a mark of penitence, confess their sins, and renounce Satan and all the forces of wickedness that drew them from the love of God. As they did so, they would turn towards the west, the direction associated with death since the sun always sets over the western horizon. Then they would turn and face the east, the direction of new life and resurrection. As they watched the sun begin to rise, they would make their profession of faith and walk into a large font. Indeed, the fonts would likely have been shaped as a cross or a sarcophagi, a larger, more elaborate casket, to call to mind Paul's words about being buried with Christ in baptism. A whole jar of oil would be poured over their heads and they would be dressed in a gleaming white garment. Finally, they'd be ushered into another room where all their Christian brothers and sisters would greet them. The room was lit with the new fire of Easter and they were invited to taste their first Eucharist. The drama and mystery of the moment is palpable even now. And it's no wonder that this ancient rite has been adopted into our modern Easter practices and every baptism. In our baptism, we've been turned from a life of sin and begun to walk the way of love back to God. In our baptism, we've been turned from death itself and been joined with Christ in his everlasting life. And in our baptism, we've been turned from a living a life alone and become one with the whole church as members of the body of Christ. So let's explore this way of turning and reflect either with a small group or by yourself, maybe in a journal. In the letter to the Romans, Paul lays out his theological belief that baptism is our turning point into a new life with Christ. It is the time that we leave the life of sin and death behind us and will be born into life that is eternal. In your group or in your journal, if you're on your own, 
Join in discussion about the lesson and have conversation about some of the questions that I'm going to ask you in a moment. And just so you know, there are even more questions and activities listed in the full curriculum. So here's the first one. Paul's vision of a baptismal life is one lived free from the weight of everlasting sin and death. What does it mean to be freed from that burden? How much does sin weigh on you? Turning is a practice that involves confessing our sins as well as forgiving others. Share a story about the time you were forgiven. How did it feel? What are the places and people that needs to be turned back to God in your life so that you can go forth in his love? Let us pray again. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.